Howdy, howdy. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome. We'll wait for a second to see if anyone sees and wants to join us. Tonight we are talking all about our experience with leasing property and um, maybe some do's and don'ts or just what our experience is and, and hopefully some of you are on here to ask us questions live. That's really what we would like yeah. these things to be is a conversation more than just at us preaching the word to you. So. I mean, we can get on a soapbox and <laughs> preach all day. I mean, we that's can. all right. <laughs> <clears throat> We're both pretty good talkers. So I'm the quiet one. Yes, anyone knows who knows us <laughs> knows who's the quiet one. <clears throat> All right. Well, I guess we can just jump in it. Yep. We, um, so I guess we could back up a couple of years. Uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. Okay. 2017, we purchased our uh, herd of cows and we had zero ground uh, to run the cows on. And uh, last minute, business partners dropped out. So we were. <clears throat> We were kind of in a scramble to finance, move, find property to put cows on, and uh, make it through the first <laughs> make it through the first winter. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, don't buy your cows in the, right before uh, right winter. before winter. Yeah, unless you've got plenty of land to run everybody on, and and you're I mean that's what you're hoping to get a good deal. We got a good deal. Um, great cows um so that's kind of the situation that we hit when we when we purchased our animals yeah our cows were delivered in september <clears throat> and we had been kind of working trying to find um because we were living up in dinosaur area um at the time and trying to figure out where they were going to go and if you go and um read on our website more about our story it goes into a little bit more detail about that but um the ending decision was we owned 12 acres here here in montrose and we figured we um need to use what we have uh to do this without um getting into much more but <clears throat> the herd we were getting was 33 head <clears throat> so we um this is where our inexperience really uh, spoke because we had really no idea uh, how much, I mean, you can put how much per head on paper and, and plan everything out like that. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, we had to come up with a few things. That was a, a place to put the cows, feed through the winter, um, and a way to turn that into revenue at some point in the near future in the really near future um and, and so it was kind of like being thrown into uh, the lion's den if you will uh or refiner's fire we just had we hit the ground running we we looked for places in in the skull creek dinosaur area clear up to elk springs and there's times where both of us look at each other and we go gosh i wish we had stayed there um <clears throat> we love the people we love the country and uh um yeah, it, it's a good place, and, and I think we could have made it work pretty well for us there. We we chose to operate out of an area where we had property, where there was a larger city, <clears throat> to be able to get that product out to people. Um, we weren't really sure how working and situation was going to happen, so we, um, when we first got here, Carissa went back to work full-time, and I operated everything primarily with the kids and uh if you've ever tried to push a wet noodle across the floor and try and keep in a straight line that's pretty much how I could describe my first year uh being a full-time dad and uh a full-time at home dad I I was full t promise I was full-time dad but at, at home <clears throat> and a full-time rancher at the and same a full-time rancher yeah so, so with that, um, a lot of looking, um, what it takes to find property is you either know people 
or you are constantly talking about it and asking anybody that you meet, um, any conversation you have, you bring it up, looking for land, <laughs> you, you have to be talking about it. So the first property we got, the business partners that we were starting with, they lived up in the Cimarron Valley and um, they had gotten the phone number of a guy that had property right next to their home. And so um, while we were still kind of working together, we, we got that number and that's really how everything started. Yeah. Um, so after they dropped out, we contacted him and and I procured a, a lease with him. The fortunate thing about that lease, though, was it was up in Cimarron. So most people are bringing their cows down because yeah, it's high country. Yeah. Gets deep snow, real cold temperatures. So it really worked out well for us because of the breed of cows we had, the Scottish Highland. They they handled the temperatures really well yeah and that was a huge blessing because our, our herd was we bought the herd as a dry herd <clears throat> they started calving right when they got here we they weren't supposed to calve at all thank thank goodness that was a huge blessing um but the hardiness of this breed hitting the ground and then having snow not that long after was a testament of of, of what kind of animals they are yeah. i mean they'd see temperatures from negative uh 15 up you know yeah and wind and and, and they, they just they kept all the way from september to literally december, december 31st, 31st was yeah. the last one so um she's a nice queen <laughs> yeah so we we got a hold of that rancher and talked to him um and and he normally would have cows there um, until sometime in November. So our cows were delivered in September. Thankfully, the people that we started business with, even though they decided not to continue, they were gracious yeah, enough very gracious. to let us <clears throat> keep the cows on their property. They had about five acres that um, lasted the cows um, from, from September, mid-September to <clears throat> um, uh like the first or second week in November. So yeah. we were really, really blessed that way. Um, so then they were there in Cimarron until February. They were on 40 acres, and they, um, they ate really well. We started haying in January, um, and, and, then it, and then what the clincher was, though, is we had to find a place for them to be um, before, in the spring. Yeah, before it started getting <laughs> green is what we were asked. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so, so we were there, we had a spot, but then we had to find another place. So this is one of the things that we have found with leases. Um, especially when you are using property that somebody else still kind of uses yeah. or, um, or, or first time, you know, contract, there's, there's a lot of land out there, but sometimes it doesn't turn out to be, yes, you you can use this property and we'll have a five year contract yeah. and you'll always be able to be there. <clears throat> What a lot of the situations, what we've found end up being is, yeah, you guys can be here for this amount of time. And so then it's always, always looking, always talking, always looking for, for property. Yeah. Um, but fortunately the guy, his uh, name is Randy, great yeah, Randy. guy. Yeah. He, um, he actually lives just behind just us. Just behind us. The, if any of you have been to the ranch, we've got the adobe hills behind us, and he lives on the other side of the he's adobe got, hills. Yeah, he's got 500 acres just right on the other side of the, the fence. We've had to chase horses off of his properties in years past. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so he told us <clears throat> that he had a guy that rented from him that owned 37 acres that he didn't do anything with, and we might talk to him. So this is how the snowball kind of began we we were able to find one person and they knew someone and and that property thankfully we've been able to have a consistent lease with 
Yeah. Um, He's really left it unimpeded. We, we were able to come and go, basically. Um, we did quite a bit of fencing, which is awesome. Uh, he, another just great guy. And that's <clears throat> basically what our theory was. If there was a piece of property that had grass about to the height of your knee and it was brown... We needed to get a hold of those people, and so we basically talked to every person driving up driveways, knocking on doors. Um, yeah, we pretty much left every stone unturned. We um, <clears throat> uh, so moving, quitting a job, moving, and and starting over. We weren't a part of the agricultural community here, <clears throat> so we we really really scrambled when we got here, and and it really paid off for us. Yeah, in a big way. So I think I think the biggest the biggest takeaway for me and 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 the piece of advice that I would give anyone and everyone who wants to Venture. wants to do something like. They have their home. They're not really in a place to go out and buy something. Um, you just have to ask. You just have to be constantly on the lookout. And like he said, if there was property that looked unused, looked unused then you contact and find out how to contact those people. The stigmatism that uh, that ranchers are angry, crotchety old men is is probably one of the furthest things from the truth. Uh, we had a lot of compassion and continue to have a lot of compassion in, in the agriculture community. We do things vastly different than 90% of the people around here, but because we, uh, we are able to talk to them, um, even if we don't work with them, we walk away from it better people because of having talked to a lot of these people, um, lots of experience. And so it's, along with what Carissa's saying don't be afraid to yeah. reach out yeah don't don't be afraid to reach out and talk to people um <clears throat> so so we moved the cows from Cimarron in February March February uh February 16th 2018 yeah 2018 we, we moved... signed the contract on Oh, that's right. Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. It was our date night. It <laughs> was our date night to go sign the lease contract. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and generally people who aren't using their property don't expect much. No. Um, they're grateful it's used. The, the, the range is what we've paid... Um, this one lease... Uh, Anywhere from $5 a head to close to, to $20 50. a head. Yeah. So wide wide range a month and uh, five to twenty dollars a head a month. Uh, yeah, and <clears throat> and this one property that we got, um, uh, it was just a set price. So it didn't matter how many babies were born or whatever. We just had a set price of what we were what we were rent uh, leasing for. So we got on on this one and it served us for about a year. We didn't have anything else, so we ended up grazing it pretty hard. Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yeah. But uh but the the key again, never stopped asking about land. So we actually got hooked up with the city. So there are some great resources that you might not realize. It doesn't yeah. have to be um just individual owners. There's businesses and corporations and commercial even property. Commercial property. City property. The city county. Our city um, specifically owns, I, well, I don't know how many acres they own. They have a lot of land that isn't in use. And it's it's for future plan development, basically, or, or they needed to buy it to be able to finish current projects, that kind of stuff. And, and we basically, um, I'm not even, I don't really remember how we, oh. Because <clears throat> there was an ad in the paper for... Yep. Four acres. Yep, four acres. And we were we were considering it. So Stephen went and met with the gentleman at the time. He's retired now, but Stephen went and met with them, and they just talked. And he was really really excited about agriculture and 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 the things that Stephen was sharing with him. What we wanted to do, and just in that conversation, 
He was like, we have 35 acres. <laughs> yeah, hey, why don't you follow me? <laughs> so we went and we, so that's um, where we, we have a, a lease with the city. And um, uh, there's a lot of scud, scuttlebutt, if you will, about the city of Montrose right now. Lots of stuff going on. And at the end of the day, uh, th- there's some really good people there. And um, it, and the they're just trying to do what they think is right or feel is right. And, and sometimes they are, maybe sometimes they're not. But we've, we've certainly been blessed. And uh, it's been a, a great opportunity to be able to work with the city of Montrose um, in, in this <clears throat> in this regards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they they've opened up other avenues and possibilities uh, for uh, just being there, having that piece of property to be able to swing cows to and, and rotate through. Um, mm-hmm. So anyways, go ahead. Um. Yeah, so so we got that. It it took a little bit of time, you know, working with some There was quite things, a bit of fencing like, still to do. Well, but even just um working with the city like they had to take it to two of the town uh, city council yeah, meetings it, it and took have about some six a- months. approval. Yep, yeah, took about 6 months. So, it is a viable option, just know that it could take a little bit more time than some others, but wherever you are, cities and counties, school districts, uh contacting school districts and asking them about vacant land Mm -hmm. there's a lot of school district property in in colorado that is for lease and you just have to contact people and and get the ball rolling on that i mean you could where we used to live in skull creek yeah 680 acres right behind us and it was a school district um piece of property and uh the gentleman that ran cows on it he had a very long-term lease and it was like a 20 year lease or something like that so and uh so these are uh, if if you get to a situation where you you are are dead set that you are going to be a farmer rancher you've got to you've got to do something with cows but you don't have the land do your research and find, talk to the city, talk to the county, talk to the school districts, talk to the state, uh, BLM, Forest. I guarantee if you want to do it, you'll find something to do it on. Yeah. If if you're having a hard time with individuals. Yeah. And I, I guess with Carissa and I, and this is the kicker, is uh, we basically eat, sleep, and drink uh the next jump so we're we're just constantly uh, it, it's it's just there all the time a part of our conversation and uh one of us might disappear for a couple hours because we decide we're finally going to go talk to so-and-so about a piece of property and and we work something out yeah so so that is like i said there's there's Generally, um, when you're looking for something that's inexpensive, you're going to find that you don't, won't necessarily have the long-term lease and you'll be jumping around between properties. So there is a lot of work involved that way. However, it's been very beneficial because we've built relationships with people. We've gained a lot of experience. Our children have gained a lot of experience and, and really just, um, kind of have to come out of your comfort zone. So, um, what are the other properties that we were fortunate enough to lease was a property down the road from us that, um, very good friends were at and they passed on our desire basically to, um, to take care of the property. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're okay. <laughs> um, and anyway, so we were able to work out something that was literally just a half a mile down the road from us. And it's a mile. I run it. <laughs> it's a half a mile. I drive it. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that was what what you do. So if you if you don't have long term leases locked down, you look at short term leases, and then you you kind of have to have a few more of those so that when you're done through your rotation, so. On a bigger uh, parcel, if you owned 150 acres, you're just going to move around your property. We do rotational planned grazing, so we just we move from one paddock to the next. Well, 
Our right. paddocks are another 35 acres on somebody else's property. So um, if we're if we're unprepared and cows decide to be uh, done eating whatever they're eating, um, <clears throat> we we used to scramble them like, oh my gosh. As we've moved along, we've we've realized the value of um, knowing when to just move them, and and that. So uh, tonight, uh, very unplanned. I spent uh, probably an hour pushing some cows back in. Uh, they they found thus the one spot that they could crawl under, and anyways, so they're basically at the point where they're telling us all right we're we're bored of this spot we're ready to move on and uh, we have a child's birth coming up in the next month and a half so what we're looking at right now is basically two months down the road of planning and hopefully by this weekend we have another sp uh, piece of property or another spot uh, finished so we can move cows to it so when you do when you when you do these shorter term leases where land is unused you wind up doing fencing and if you're if you're squeamish of doing fencing or doing hard work to get a good deal you probably shouldn't be doing what we're doing um because it's what it takes sometimes to to make it through the next jump yeah and that that's the <clears> thing too that so there's there's a lot of positives to leasing property um uh, one a lot yeah you know really low capital really low investment as your far as yeah your infrastructure costs are very low mm -hmm. can and, be, can be very low yep and um and what we've found is we've been able to get on properties that haven't been used for so long that there is a large amount of forage when we first get there which really eases a lot of the financial stress and burden of um, making sure that there's enough to eat for everyone. However, some cons of that are a lot of the properties out there that haven't been used for a long time have not been maintained. <laughs> and the, so, the fences... <laughs> The, the fence is the fencing the barbed wire so it's it's kind of fun i i can tell you how old the fence is now based off of how the barbed wire looks <laughs> and one property was about 102 years old the uh the fencing that was original uh the other property about 70 years old you know uh so be prepared to deal with some yep. of those things you, you're gonna have things that you have to and, do and with that even when you go there and you go through all the fencing, you go over the whole 37 acres. <laughs> yep, all of it. Or the whole 20 acres. Or five, or whatever. Your animals are very good at finding weak spots. Yeah. Anybody who is with livestock, you know this. So, so you really depend on them to communicate to you <laughs> where where you lacked in finding those weak spots. So what so we're laughing about is all the heart attacks that I've had when cows or any other the an other animals decide to just jump out all of a sudden yep. and, and disappear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so there's a lot of work involved. You're going to pay more. Of course, for something that has good fencing yeah, is established. Yeah, very. The, the other thing, we've been blessed to always have somewhere to have our herd. Yeah. Always have something lined up. It's been through word of mouth mostly. We've done advertising on Facebook, like in search of, looking for, contact And it helped a couple me. of times. And, and, yeah, not necessarily for the least part. No. We've got maybe some leads, but that didn't work out. We meet new um, people. Yes. Um, but most of the properties that we have, well, all the properties that we have leased have been through word of mouth. Yeah, someone word of referring mouth. us to someone. But we were also blessed with one of our customers that came to us and said, um, we want to work something out. So, and that has been a big, very grateful very grateful huge for. blessing to yeah. us um because there's the other thing about the herd dynamics is um you know having certain ones separated for a while having a place for your bull um when you don't want him in because you want to get your breeding on a certain schedule or there's a lot of different little things or you have a group that you don't want bred and so you need them somewhere else. And so that was 
the timing for that property to show up was, was perfect and um yeah so it's been word of mouth or we've had people come to us yeah uh we did have an opportunity to lease some property this last year that would have been good um however be picky about who you work with the the gentleman was a great guy really really nice we just felt like um it wasn't a match for us wasn't a match yeah even if that meant for us to have a little bit more of a tough spot or maybe hay somewhere we didn't necessarily want to yeah um but what ended up happening though is we didn't it was kind sign of a better... we didn't sign like a long term lease or even like a six month lease. Yeah. But we got into a place where we needed um like two weeks worth of feed yeah. before we could move them somewhere. And we called him and he's like, Yeah, yeah. and we paid him a daily rate and that was great. It was And it was a really good It situation. was long enough. Yeah. And it worked out really well. So don't be afraid to say no if you don't feel like you drive with that person. It's okay. Yeah, don't... <clears throat> One thing that ranchers and farmers do is they get themselves in a situation where they feel desperate. And when you're desperate, you make some pretty poor decisions that you're going to live with. And you'll think about for years to come. And... And it's from not being picky by feeling like that proverbial dinosaur is going to get you. And and the the one thing I can tell you as as a person who's very motivated by fear, like a, I'm scared. Oh, we gotta hurry up. Um, is stop. Don't. It's not as big a deal as you think it is. There's always solutions, always opportunities, always a way to take care of your animals. Make sure that you are following that feeling here for your operation. Yeah. Don't make decisions out of, uh, based off of emotions. If you're making a decision, like he said, because you're feeling desperate, something's got to happen, we got to do this, we don't have any other option... You know, all of that stress and all of those things, it's not going to be a good decision. It'll just cost you more money in the long run. Yep. So um, so that ended up working out really, really well. Um, and uh, and then this last property that we um, are on that the cows are doing winter grazing um, has been amazing. Fantastic property. It's been probably our most expensive um, property, but it still is a really good price like we, we couldn't complain no there's no complaints there was and, so much yeah. feed available on this that the cows have been there since october and they're still eating yeah and um, we haven't had the hay this year so far yeah and um P- potentially potentially this this uh winter season potentially we won't have the hay at all Yep. And so that's the other recommendation when you're leasing properties. You either make sure you have enough that you're able to do your rotation um, to to build up, have forage extend yeah, you through the season. Yeah, you want to have your, your reserves built. Or you save properties. Like, <laughs> like... Um, we let every one of our leasee, our landlords, we let every one of them know... Yeah, I'm planning on being here for a few months, and then I've got another property I'm going to. I'll be there. Give them some security when it comes to what your operation is and some of your plans. <clears throat> it doesn't hurt anything. If anything, it it helps them help you because they will look for stuff for you uh, to to lease from mm-hmm. other people. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll tell the people that they might be there two three months, and they'll they'll move out of there. And sometimes that's all somebody wants is for you to, for that grass to get cropped and for those animals to move on. They don't want a long-term deal. They Mm -hmm. don't want to see the animals out there past a certain point. Uh, Some people are very particular about how things happen. And, um, and so. Which is okay. Yeah. We, we love particular people because you know where you stand with them. Yeah. And we're pretty particular ourselves. So it's nice. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, with all of this, uh, a lot of blessings, a lot of, um, just that word of mouth and communication and, 
and people are willing to help you a lot more than you think they are. Yeah. My rule of thumb is, well, if I, I would do that for somebody. Yeah. So it's not that I hold that expectation, but it's a belief that I have that, well, if I would do it, then it doesn't hurt to ask and it doesn't hurt to um, believe be that, that they would do that for, yeah. for me. And so, and nine times out of 10, well, Every time working with the people we've worked with, very gracious, very helpful, and even to the point, so with like a a lease, you know, you're responsible for your animals, but everyone that we have worked with has has been so helpful. If cows have gotten out, they've even just called us, your cows got out, I put them back in, and we're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's not your responsibility, but thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... In some of the cons, I'm going to kind of focus on that right now a little yeah. bit. When cows get out and you aren't, and they're not on your property, <laughs> that takes time. <laughs> so when you have a property, we live on one side of Montrose, the um, northeast end. And right now all of our cows are on the south end so. <laughs> all the, way, all down the way down there so it's at least a 15 20 minute drive it's 24 minutes if 24 anyone's minutes. asking if anyone's asking 24 minutes so when you get a call saying your cows are out it's like it 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 takes a little bit of uh, mind control <laughs> to be able to focus on what you need to do because you might be in the middle of the project or you might be um Two hours into a work day. Two hours into a work day and yeah. you're called and, and you got to go get the cows. Yeah. And um, and so then then the whole time you're driving over there, you're stressing. And um, praying, praying <laughs> to the grass god that they are somebody else's cows. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so it can be a little stressful. But, you know, there are people who own own their own property that's not where they live and they deal with the same thing yeah. so that's not no, too big really of not. a deal but the there's a little bit added stress when it's not your property and you want to be a good tenant you don't want there to be issues for your landlord and so with you his, just with their neighbors with their neighbors yeah. so you just always want your animals to stay in practice good housekeeping make sure your fences are tight make sure you not have any holes yeah repair stuff so they're not a leave it and set it thing you're no, you, gonna constantly be down there you will check your animals more when you're leasing from someone than when it's just your own property yeah. one because you know your property um two you know your you animals. know your animals you know your fences <clears throat> uh, but when it's somebody else's and it's new everything is kind of up for grabs yeah <laughs> um Another con is, like this summer, we had um, three properties we were leasing, plus our own, that Stephen got to irrigate. <laughs> and that was a lot of work. It was a lot of work for him. I, I honestly don't know how he did it. Well, let's time but... <laughs> out on that for a second. I did gain a lot of weight, because I spent a lot of time driving around. <laughs> I'm actively, I'm repairing myself right now. So now it could have been a little bit different. Um, yeah, I was in the height of morning sickness during the height of that was my fault of <laughs> during the height of irrigation, and so I was no help at all. Um, I am capable of watering fields, but this summer I wasn't. So that was that was a little bit of a reality check of how much do you actually um, want to. Expand. Have on your plate at yeah. one time. Yeah. How much can you actually do? What is realistic for you to do? And at the same time, we had some cows come up dry. So it worked out for us to downsize what we were doing. And we were really happy about that. Yep. Yeah, that worked out really well. So <clears throat> so one of the biggest lessons, and it's it's a lesson for leasing. It's a lesson for really anything in your life. But what, but what you find agriculturally speaking um, any of you that are farmers and ranchers know this as well that you just have to believe and things 
always work out. Not necessarily the way that you anticipated or planned, but they always work out and they always work out for the greatest good. And think the best of other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've gained more respect for the people in the agriculture community. You're not in the community. I'm fine. The, the one thing that I've, I've really... I look at the farmers and ranchers around me. The, uh, those men and women, they're heroes. Um, I just I can't imagine all the different struggles that they've gone through in all the years that they've done it. Um, and so they they have a very deep deep seated compassion for beginning farmers and ranchers they want you to succeed they may have children who want nothing to do with what they're doing and they dedicated their life to it and and you might be that person that gives them the spark of hope that will perpetuate an, another generation of farming and ranching yeah so uh, 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 maybe a couple more cons real quick. Um, drive time, location of property. Fuel am- consumption. Fuel consumption. The amount of fencing that you'll probably have to go through. Um, my older two kids are, they'll put a fence together better than most. Uh, they know what to do. From corner posts, H braces, and everything else, they can they could build a fence that you could bounce a dime off of, and because um, <laughs> we do a so lot. So that one's a, a a pro. Yeah, a pro <laughs> is that a con? And a, a con yeah. And a, yeah. Okay. It's a good thing. That's a good thing. But but those are just things to take into account. If yeah. you're if you're working part time, full time, when you go to lease a property, look for something that's close by. Um. Do yourself that favor. You might have a good deal somewhere else, but just remember you're going to spend whatever amount of time it is to get there and coming back, stressing, worrying, or whatever to make sure that everything's okay. Yep. And that goes into looking at the cost of what you're spending. You know, you might look at a... Um, yeah, you might get you might get a piece of property $5 really ahead. You might get a good deal. Yep, $5 ahead. But... You need to consider how much is your time worth driving there and back. Yeah. There's a piece of property. It's like 150 acres, but it's an hour one way from us. And yeah. we could get a really good deal on it. But an hour drive one way, not to mention what... And we have we have friends that do that. Mm-hmm. We have friends that do that. Yeah. But for where we are... It's it's, it's not, just not, that's not possible for yeah. us yet. So you have to look at all of your costs. The other thing is we've put a lot of money into fencing that isn't ours. We don't get to take it with us when we're done with the property. So you, you either learn how to find good deals on fencing or you just learn with the idea that whatever barbed wire you put down, whatever posts and H braces that you put in that ground, that property is going to be awesome. Yep. <laughs> and and whoever and gets it after it. you will thank you for the good work that you <laughs> did. Yes. It is worth it, though. The it amount is. of money that we've put into the fencing because it saved... Very nominal. Very it has nominal. saved us so much in terms of headache and, and cost, cost and feed yeah. and, and everything else. So you have to kind of look at it and, and weigh it and balance it. Yeah. Um. So that's kind of... A general overview of our experience with leasing property, what our experience has been. We are at a point in our operation where it is more productive for us to not lease anymore. Um, so we are actively making plans and pursuing um, uh, finding one central location to be um, or just one one property that we lease that is large enough to accommodate. To accommodate. Because everything we've done is around 30 acres. Which is great. That's... Yep. That's um, that's three months to four months worth of feed. Yeah. Typically. And and so, um, yeah, we're just at a point where we need larger. And so sometimes your leases go up when they're larger. Anyway, we're in this... We're in a place where we are... Starting to experience new challenges with... With acquiring uh, larger parcels uh, where we can centralize stuff. 
Yeah. So we'll update this discussion as we go on uh, throughout this year because we're we're hoping that this year, whether we uh, purchase or we um, wind up leasing, finding a bigger lease. Yeah. Um. There. Yeah. We'll yep. we'll just kind of keep you guys updated because it's it's a discussion worth having because it is really 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 hard to get into the agricultural community. It, and it starts from one person, yep. that word of mouth. And so we're happy to be that person for you. Yeah. Um, because of contacts we've made or experiences we've had, if you are looking for something, if you're wanting to get started with something, or you have a completely different reason, but you're looking for some property to utilize, let us know. We'd love to help you find it. We, Steven, Steven's really good at We typically have about 10 to 20 different things bumping around in this old uh, bad yeah. trap up here. Uh yeah. There's there's always a way if you want there to be. Yep. So um, pros, cons, and the fun of leasing. The lease we're on right now with our cows, both of the leases is fantastic. Uh, very compassionate, amazing people, I think, down to earth. I think one of the biggest pros is the people we've met and we, the relationships you really, we've created. You, you really, really love these people. Yeah. Because they're just as quirky as you, or they're completely normal, and you wish you were those people. <laughs> I don't know anybody like that. I do. Two people. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, <clears throat> there's any questions, send them to us. Please. We do please want, do. again, we do want these to be very... Uh, ask questions. Interactive. Yeah. So, if you're watching, ask us questions. Even if it has nothing to do with the topic that we're sharing. Yeah, we're just we coming care. up with topics to talk to you. but Things that we encounter and we think other people probably will encounter. Yeah, but um, ask us questions because we want you to be involved. So with that, I'm going to say have a good night. Love and... you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Yep, thanks for joining us. Oh, Brought I will. You by your... Uh, never mind. I will put a plug in. You're going to want to be on our email list for this one. Mr. Chef back here is starting um, a YouTube series. Um, it's probably just going to be like once My wife's a month. starting a YouTube series that I'm starring in. <laughs> That's because you are the, the We're better... We're going to call it the Chubby Chef. Meek. <laughs> I called it Cooking with Steve. Oh, Cooking with Steve. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. Anyway, um, you're going to want to be on our email list because you'll have access first, but he's doing a cooking class. Um, this first one is on the very basics. It'll give you the confidence you need to cook any pasture-raised meat R really, cut let's just call or it, variety. Yeah, let's just call it any leaner meat. Any leaner meat. That's a good... See? Look at you. And um, you'll have access on our email list and we'll make a handout to support that and he's also going to talk about the difference between collagen based meats and saturated fat based meats and why knowing that difference is important to your cooking so and your get, animals yes and your animals so there's a way you can sign up directly from our facebook page or go to wavocaranch.com and you can sign up for our email list there and that way you're guaranteed to be the first to access it so now oh no one last one, one last. last i'm the ringer we still have product available guys uh please stop by we uh we miss some of you guys just some of you yeah just some of you. <laughs> uh please stop by love to see all of our customers that we've worked with in the past and in the uh, our potential just stop by yep um yeah let we us have... fulfill your your uh protein needs yep Okay, now we'll say goodnight and we love you. Love you guys. <laughs> See ya.